Welcome back. You know, nothing can be as frustrating and potentially terrifying as a day on the water and when your boat doesn't crank. Help. Help. I'd like to share with you a recent uh, mishap that we've had with, with this boat, a Tahoe 234, um, that um, involved the boat just not cranking and when it did crank it would exhibit a beep beep every one minute or so. Um, so you know we, we kind of tried some different things we finally um, you know kind of settled on what the uh, what the the solution was which was the idle air control valve but to get there you know we, we always want to try some other things first so you know anytime the boat doesn't crank I always look at the safety switch make sure it is in the run position and then I'll also go and make sure that the drive lubricant is in the operating range those are two things that are very common um, common reasons that the boat you know, the, that the boat doesn't want to start. If those two things are good, and you're having this problem, then it very well could be the idle air control valve. Here's one way to know if that's what the problem's going to be. So, if you're able to disengage the, uh, you know, the, the gear, and, and do this right here, and crank the engine. If you can do this and then let off, let back off and get into neutral and the boat will start and it, that's the only way that it'll start, that's a, it's a, a, a surefire indicator that it's probably the idle air control valve because what that's doing is you're bypassing some sensors when you do this. And so, um, anyway, there's, there's a laundry list of things, but this is going to be applicable to a lot of Merc Cruiser boats. You've got your 5.7s, your your 5.0s, uh, I think 6.2, 7.2. There's there's a lot of, uh, of different boats that are going to be uh, affected by this same same type deal. This video particularly is going to focus on the 350 Mag MPI, and there's several different, uh, a couple different variations over a long range of, of, of years. This particular model is a 2006, 2007 era, so. Let's get going and I'll show you what's going on with this. So the engine here is the Mer Cruiser 350 Mag MPI. There are several uh, different variations of this engine and whenever we get in there I'll, I'll try to detail those variations along with the serial numbers and part numbers that you'll need for those. Um, that are going to be related to your engine based on the year of manufacture. So uh, here we go. Let's look at the tools that we're going to use for this. We need an Allen wrench of the 3 16th inch variety. You can use a uh, something like this or just the regular, you know, elbow shaped one. That'd be fine. Also going to need some uh, needle nose pliers, uh, maybe some channel locks if the idle air control valve is stuck on there. Uh, we'll kind of use these to kind of uh, help persuade that off. And then also just a, um, a 10 millimeter uh, socket wrench is good as well. Okay, and we'll start by removing the cover here. Just a simple thumb screw. Exposing the flame arrestor below. And what is the difference between a flame arrestor and an air filter? Well, a flame arrestor is in a boat and an air filter is in a car, uh, to put it simply. Um, the um, So let's go ahead and remove this little vent tube here. Just kind of pulls out there. Set that aside. And now we have three uh, 10 millimeter nuts, lock nuts, that we will uh, we'll remove. And you want to be careful with these because they uh, they are very small and you do not want them to fall into the belly of the beast. That would be terrible. Now remove this base here. Just kind of wiggle that back and forth and pop that off. And now we can remove the flame arrester and you know if you wanted to at this time you could potentially um, you know clean this thing out with some brake cleaner 
Um, you know, I think I cleaned this off with earlier uh, whenever I did this repair with some uh, carb cleaner, and you can see what it did to the um, plastic. It's just kind of discolored it, and and maybe um, you know I think uh, brake cleaner is just a little bit uh, easier on some of those materials. So it's your choice, though. If you uh, if you want to do it, if not, that's fine too. Okay, so here is our idle air control valve right here, and let's talk model numbers for just a minute. So if yours looks like mine and you have this little piece here with a little filter, then your model number is going to be 0 w 650000 through 1A299999. And that's going to be, um, this, this repair is going to be very similar for that model as well as the previous models. The previous models are going to be, uh, let's see here, we want 0 m 300 Zero 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 through zero W six four nine 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 nine. So let's cover this model, and I'll we'll work through the the parts as we go. The idle air control valve itself is going to be the same for all of those models that we talked about. That's going to be part number eight six two nine nine eight. And you can see I have purchased the um, the Quicksilver Mercruiser, um, the OEM uh, version of this. And you can do the same. I think this was 160, 170 bucks online. Uh, you could find a uh, a cheaper alternative. Um, I'm sure on eBay or Amazon or somewhere like that for about 30 or 40 dollars. Also, something something to think about that if you are in the middle of nowhere and maybe need the part immediately, and the only thing that you have is a local uh, auto parts store, you're going to be able to find um, that that idle air control valve there is going to be the same as a 2002 Ford Windstar. I don't know why that is because that's a Ford and this is a GM, but that uh, from all the forms that appears to be the uh, the common consensus, and I thought I'd pass that knowledge along. So um, the next thing that we're going to do is uh, let's just take a look at the um, there's a filter on this thing. So this filter right here, um, if you have the model like mine. You, you, you want to go ahead and change this filter at the same time, which I have I've done that there. That's um, that filter is going to be uh, part number 35 dash 8M2001030. Now, if you have the older uh, model that does not have this assembly, your filter is going to be located right down in here. And so that filter number is going to be or they call it an IAC muffler, um, but it's essentially a filter. So that number is going to be 35-863-829-0. Uh, and you would replace that part by sticking it right down in there. Uh, you can probably see that I have purchased the part uh, in error because I wasn't sure which model number I had. So I'm trying to trying to save you some time with this one and maybe some additional purchases that I had to make, and maybe you won't have to make those. And so let's get this thing off. The first thing we're going to want to do is disconnect our electrical connector here. And there's just a uh, little finger, like a depression in the back that you can just kind of push down with this finger and uh, pop that off of there. We'll just set that aside. The IAC valve itself is held on with these two bolts right here. And that's what we're going to use our Allen wrench for. And you want to be careful with these as well uh, because they're not retained by anything and they could also fall down uh, into, uh, into the motor well. Okay, and you can see with the uh, screws removed, uh, we can uh, just pull the idle air control right off. If yours has been on there for a while, it may be stuck. And that's why I say it would be good to put like maybe some uh, channel lock pliers around this to kind of give yourself a little leverage to uh, to, to work it uh, off of there. Um, here's another difference. Uh, we'll analyze the uh, the part here in a second, but let's just look at this. Okay, so if you have the newer model like mine with the filter here, you are not going to have to replace this gasket here. Um, this whole entire piece, uh, you know, comes with the gasket and is about a seventy dollar part, and I don't I don't think it's necessary to replace this. So. Um, we will we'll leave this alone and we'll we'll mate the new IAC valve directly up to this. However, for you other guys out there that have the filter in here and the different model numbers, you're going to want to replace the gasket. And that gasket number 
Your part number for that gasket is going to be 27-863-112. Okay, so here's a look down in the uh, idle air control valves. Um, you can see this is the old one and this is the new one. You know, I can't really tell uh, too much on that other than maybe this one's just a little bit more uh, corroded, a little more crud in there. So anyway, we'll get that new one installed and get on down the road. Okay, and now we're ready to just reassemble everything in the same order that we disassembled it. And don't forget to reconnect your electrical connector. And make sure this little attachment point is oriented to whichever way uh, it was originally oriented in your boat. And I don't have torque specs for any of these nuts or bolts, but they're very, they're small and they're, they have lock nuts. I just would not, uh, I would not go crazy on these things. Just tighten them up and, and call it a day. Don't, don't try to prove how strong you are on these. Same thing goes for, true for these, uh, for these screws in here for the idle air control. And it was seriously that easy. So as far as cost savings on this, you know, uh, it's not a very uh, you know difficult repair. I don't know that a shop would charge you uh, more than an hours of labor, but you know, still that's going to be 150 bucks uh, in some places. So uh, you're going to save that money. And, and really, at this time of year, our marina is so busy uh, that that you they may put you on a uh, on a two or three week waiting list. And you know that could be uh, a large part of your summer and, and going to uh, restrict a lot of the use of your boat. So. Um, you know, hopefully if you uh, can do this yourself, you can save yourself some, not only uh, money, but a little time on the water as well. And the obligatory test start. And it sounds just like it should. So if you found the video helpful, please give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing. We've got a lot of great stuff on the channel and more in the kitty. All aimed at trying to keep a few more dollars in your pocket and help you live the good life for cheap.